طيب السلام عليكم everybody good evening to everybody um, I'm Dr. Jamil bin Abed uh, assistant professor at King, uh, King Saud University College of Architecture and Planning today's topic is going to be about vertical vegetation and exploring all the benefits and, and potential from that uh, aspect so I'm going to switch off the camera here and start the presentation um, so today we're going to go through definitions in the beginning of the whole vertical vegetation and types and benefits and then pioneers and examples of vertical vegetation and end up with potential. So we'll start with the definitions. We'll start from the beginning. So naturally occurring vertical vegetation, which is vegetation growing on any vertical surface, such as how vegetation is found on waterfalls, river banks, seeping rocks, cliffs, caves and slopes. Basically how it is in nature. And we have the man-made vertical vegetation, which is planted vegetation on either partially or fully covering building facades or other vertical structures. As we can see in the photos as images and just examples. Um, the beginning. So the hanging gardens of Babylon were one of the greatest achievements of vertical vegetation where the Shaolin King uh, built the garden around 600 BC. He constructed the garden to please his wife who was homesick and was longing for the forest, mountains, and fragrant plants of her home, hometown in Persia. It was an immense project uh, because he had to import new plants where were not native to the area. He chose to have many levels of the garden to replicate his wife's homeland uh, landscape topography. Unfortunately, due to earthquakes, earthquakes uh, the gardens were destroyed around the end of the second century BC. But we can see here some depictions of, of how it looked like. Nobody has images, obviously, of that, but that's how it's supposed to look like. And then moving on, plants gained vertical attention uh, where the Lumber brothers uh, showed perils, uh, trellises, uh, arbors, bowers, and gazebos uh, were used around the 15th century in Paris and some other places among that, uh, helping plants to grow vertically. These structures were specifically designed to sustain variety of decorative plants and becoming more sophisticated in design. So here the plants are starting to grow vertically. It started appearing in paintings and pictures and everywhere that the plants are going vertically more and more. Uh, then we're gonna map fast forward. <laughs> and then jumping, moving fast forward to the 80s uh, where uh, there was a, vegetate, a, a green vegetating movement in Europe, specifically in Germany, uh, where they vegetated a lot of spaces and buildings. And ever since it started from, from that part, it moved to Europe the rest of Europe and spread all around uh, the world slowly till the modern day. Um, and then upon that, uh, many advances in, in vertical vegetation solution came up that also helped spreading uh, this movement like lightweight growth medium and easy to install metal structures, uh, wires, panels, uh, pocket systems, and also deeper understanding of the plants to allocate them where appropriate in which system. Uh, finally, the support that, that came to vertical vegetation was from rating systems like LEED uh, that added awareness uh, and knowledge in the field to associate them with green buildings. So there's two types of uh, vertical vegetation. There's green facades and there's living wall, walls. And usually everything else falls under either one of those two. So we'll start with green facades. So green facades is vertical systems featuring vegetation uh, that could be climber plants or cascading ground cover uh, that are trained to cover building facades or especially designed support supporting structures, also called green screens or green walls. Uh, so basically, uh, the plants could be uh, based uh, at the base of the structure um, and planters or not, uh, could be also any height. And green facades can attach to any existing wall or built freestanding. So here this describes the three different types of green facades. It could be either directly attached to the building as example A, or B double skin concept where it's separated from the building and it's growing on its own separate structure or in container system where it could be on any other level. So it could, it could be in the middle of the building or higher or lower than that. It also could be attached or not. Um, and then the second uh, type is the living wall. So living walls, also called bio walls, are composed of plants uh, being planted vertically 
like using pre-vegetated panels or integrated fabric systems uh, that are fixed to structure walls, uh, structural walls or frames uh, with different varieties of growth mediums. Modular panels uh, could be comprised of recycled plastics, can, plastic containers, geotextiles, irrigation and growing medium and vegetation. The system supports a great variety of plant species, including mixtures of ground covers, ferns, low shrubs, perennials, flowers, among other plants. If systems are without growth mediums, uh, it could be hydroponics or aquaponic systems. So here are the three main, uh, let's say, examples of, of living walls. So the well known as, as the panels and the pocket systems, which is A here. And then we have the hydroponic system where they don't use a growth medium, they just use water and they add nutrients to the water. And then the aquaponic system is a system uh, of growing plants in water, which is basically hydroponic, but they add another part to it, uh, which is cultivating aquatic organisms, where basically the nutrient rich water from raising fish provides natural fertilizers for the plant. And that is involving nitrifying bacteria uh, for converting ammonia into nitrates. And the plants help purify the water for the fish. So the benefits. But before we move on to the benefits, first, we have to understand, um, it has to be clear that uh, a lot of variables uh, affect the degree of which the benefits of vertical vegetations are expected. Um, like, here we go the types of vertical vegetation, the construction system, uh, types of growth medium, climate, irrigation system, operation system, opera uh, operation and maintenance, and plant selection, among other variables. So these are the, the main benefits of vertical vegetations. Let's say the thermal effect, sound insulation, air quality, food source, psychological effect, enhanced biodiversity, stormwater control, aesthetical appeal, and increased property value. We're going to go through each one of them just briefly uh, to explain it a little bit more. So the thermal effect. First, clarifying that vertical vegetation thermal effect is determined by interception of solar radiation, wind, thermal insulation, and evaporative cooling. And evaporative cooling happens from the plant and substrate also, which is the growth medium. Um, yes. Essentially, vertical vegetation systems can lower the urban heat island effect by acting as a shield covering plants uh, and the building surfaces, minimizing surface area that collects heat and radiates it at night. Also lowering surrounding temperatures by heat consumed and the evaporative uh, evaporation process from the soil and plant tissue. Uh, also, uh, due to the thermal isolation effect, the vertical vegetation aids in lowering energy consumption, where in the summer it reduces air conditioning loads by shading walls and windows from incoming solar energy. Uh, air quality through uh, through the simple act of photosynthesis, uh, the plants consume CO2 and releases oxygen back into the air. This process depends on the plant health, where a healthy plant will release a larger amount of oxygen into the air. A uh, plant has uh, the capability uh, to store or sequester carbon that would be otherwise released into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. Plants also collect uh, dirt particles where some species with prominent uh, bubitins uh, which are uh, small, fine, short hairs on the leaves or the stems of the plants. So those small particles of dust, they just get collected on those little uh, small higher hairs. Vertical vegetation systems uh, indoor could also be used as natural bi uh, biofilters to remove pollutants from the air. But here is more interesting where the roots and all of the microorganisms related to them are acting as a wide air cleaning surface with the height, weight, to size efficiency. On the felt, pollutant particles are taken in from the air and are slowly decomposed by microbes and mineralized before ending up as plant fertilizer. And so microbes on plant surface and roots degrade air pollutants. So psychological well-being. 
Uh, prior research indicates that uh, interacting with plants, as in vertical vegetation, it enhances brain cognitive functions and specifically increases working memory span and improves mood. Um, adding to that, after interaction, interaction with, with nature and natural environment, which is plants basically in this case, that resembles in plants also uh, can perform better tasks. That depends on direct attention abilities. Vertical vegetation endorses the feeling of social safety through positive impact that is associated with the plant and engaging with vegetation, planting, grooming, harvesting, uh, has a therapeutic effect uh, driving from the physical activity as known in the horticulture therapy school. Vertical vegetation also affects the stormwater control to a certain degree. So uh, growth medium here acts more than anything where it can help with stormwater control as they act like a sponge to a certain degree and provides a delay mechanism to relieve pressure on stormwater entry point during a steady downpour of rain. And any system that drains to the ground would have an effect, but, it, uh, but not uh, the vertical garden planters. Containers, pockets, uh, they can only hold some, some, type, some, uh, some amount of water depending on their size. Sound insulation. When installed indoor, it acts as acoustical panels, not reflecting sound and absorbing uh, some of the leading, uh, less as some of it leading to uh, less noisy uh, interiors. When used outdoors in massive amounts uh, and wide ranges, it helps reduce sound and sound and acts as a sound barrier. It is important to know that vertical vegetation systems, uh, each part of it acts also in this aspect. Uh, so the soil in the vertical vegetation system usually is the most effective part of the system. So living wall systems here are better than green facades, where this, uh, the living wall system has growth medium and the green facade systems usually have climate plants. Also, it, it should be noted that uh, leaves on plants create noise when exposed to wind, uh, and that helps minimize other noise around it because of the white noise that it's creating, so minimizing other types of sounds. Food source, vertical farming. It's a type of vertical vegetation. So when you just, uh, your intention is as produce, it's, it's called uh, uh, vertical farming. Uh, it is used to grow many crops like summer squash, herbs, uh, peppers, lettuce, the eggplants, uh, spinach, cantaloupe, tomatoes, English cucumbers, strawberries, uh, microgreens, uh, sprouts, mushrooms, among other uh, types of, of, of plants. Uh, that being said, uh, vertical farming optimizes growth when done in a controlled environment. And here we find a lot of aquaponic systems that's usually used in, the, in, in controlled environments. Uh, generally speaking, vertical vegetation, when used for farming, it saves space and brings crops to the city. So it shortens the, the transportation distance and time. Get down a bigger scale. And then we have the increased biodiversity, creating a suitable environment uh, that will enhance the life of animals like birds and insects like butterflies, among other uh, others that will enhance the biodiversity of the area. Aesthetical appeal and the increased property value. So as aesthetical appeal is, is somewhat the, the given situation here. Uh, the aesthetical appeal and the connection plants uh, people have with plants is a universal feeling that uh, most people feel. Uh, the changes that happens between seasons where leaves change color and when flowers bloom and blossom are even more opportunities to express our attraction and appreciation to a vertical vegetation. Also, their connection to place uh, could happen by choosing uh, native plants uh, that adds a, a cultural connection and a sense of place. And about the, the last point, which is the increased uh, property value, uh, that happens by adding up all the other benefits together, causing a better, uh, better choices and, and a more desirable place to be at. Pioneers. Uh, I'm, there's a lot of people who are into this field, but I'm going to talk about only two people. So we'll start with uh, Patrick Blanc. So Patrick Blanc is a botanist who was born in 1953, also known as the Green Man, and acknowledged as one of the leading names in the field of vertical vegetation. Uh, 
his system is 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 basically um, uh, doesn't have growth medium, so it's a hydroponic system. The details of how it works is uh, he places a metal frame that supports the PVC plate, 10 millimeters thick, that acts as a moisture barrier between the interior or exterior, whatever, when the vertical vegetation is being installed, um, on which uh, are stapled two layers of, of felt, three millimeters thick each. The layers of felt supports the roots of the plants, where they cut them with razors usually and they slide the plants inside. A network of pipes controlled by valves providing nutrient solutions um, uh, containing dissolved minerals needed for the plants to grow. The felt gets soaked and the plants harvest the nutrients they need. And excess water is collected in the bottom uh, basin and works in a closed circuit. Plants are chosen uh, for their ability to grow in these types of environments. And usually they're distributed uh, by how they consume water. These are some examples of his work in Bangkok interior display, and here's two exteriors in Brussels and Rio de Janeiro. He, he's been exploring for a while, so he started with the living walls on basic systems with the different varieties because he's a botanist, so he knows what he's doing exactly when it comes to plants. But then he explored more with the more, when it kind of became more kind of artistic uh, more than anything with uh, free forms and uh, public spaces. And then we have John Nouvelle. So he's a French architect who was born in 1945. He is known to be bold in his pursuit and new ideas and challenges uh, that he takes uh, in order to strengthen his, uh, his boundaries uh, in the field. He collaborated with Patrick Blanc on many projects, but we'll mention two of them today. Uh, on the left, the first is the uh, Nouvelle. Uh, that opened in 2018 in Kuala Lumpur, which is a mixed-use development towers that has 200, that is 200 meters high, uh, where it is covered by 243 different climbing plant species. And then the second project is uh, One Central Park in Australia, opened late 2013, also is a mixed-use building that is 50 meters high, where a vertical vegetation on the facade is covering with plants and flowers and vines. All right, so now we're going to talk about different examples just to show the variety of vertical vegetation. How could it be? How can it span indoor, outdoor, and in different ways? So we'll start by Gardens by the Bay in Singapore, which was in 2011. It's a big project, but there's two parts of it. Um, First, the conservatory report, which is this part here. Um, it has all the living walls inside, there's walkways inside, there's the waterfalls. Um, so experiencing the vertical vegetation going through it was also another uh, different way of seeing plants from different perspectives. And then uh, the giant super, super trees, they called them, these giant metal structures that varied in height. Um, were just metal structures that, that was covered with plants. So when they grow up fully, uh, probably more recent images will probably show that they're all fully covered now with plants, uh, creating walkways and different experiences in between them uh, was also interesting. Uh, and calling them giant trees, obviously, show or super trees, so the concept. Uh, those structures also act as uh, they collect water, rainwater and, they're, uh, uh, and they have also other uh, uh, benefits for this project. Uh, they also are venting ducts for the conservatory at the same time, and they have solar panels in, in some parts of them. There's also a restaurant on top, creating different experiences and, and verticality when it comes to, to vegetation. Then we have the Greenwall Terminal 3 at Changi Airport, and the Jewel also at Changi Airport, two different projects at the same airport. Uh, they all had different variations of, of plants. So the, the green wall at Terminal 3 was 2007. Uh, the Shanghai Airport is in Singapore, uh, covering 4,144 square meters, uh, consists of more than 10,000 plants, uh, 20, 25 different species of climber plants. Uh, the plants are growing on st stainless steel cables uh, secured on the infrastructure system, and each cable is removable in case uh, they need to replace it or uh, 
And uh, the Jewel uh, at Changi Airport was opened in 2019. Uh, it has a 40 meter high rain vortex and the world's largest indoor waterfall. Uh, the presence of vegetation on many levels and climbers are undeniably ex experienced at the, at the dome that people will transit to this terminal just to visit and see this whole extreme vegetation situation where they had them on levels and they also use different types of plants where there's climbers, shrubs, trees, there's a, a lot of different varieties. Two more projects here. We have Bosco Verticale in Milan in Italy in 2014. Uh, the vegetation here improves the building energy efficiency, reduces the urban heat island, uh, air temperature mitigation, and increased biodiversity, where it's basically planted on, on these planters and the balconies in each apartment. And then we have the Paris Art Museum in Miami, uh, 2011. Uh, the fascination with innovation of hanging greenery creates the therapeutic feeling and great art display that was translated uh, by, into reality by Patrick Long where he used vegetation uh, to create hanging art pieces in front of the museum. These were before the plants flourished and these were after the plants were growing. Here, these are two different experiences with vertical vegetation. So this is a, a system uh, that was created by a Canadian company uh, where air flies through the vertical vegetation system and the return is in the back of it, so it, it goes through the through the uh, the vertical vegetation uh, system, and it goes back to the room. So a single pass of air through the five centimeter thick uh, living wall uh, can remove up to eighty percent of formaldehyde for every one hundred square meter of floor space. The one square meter of living wall should be used to filter the air effectively. And then we have the MFO Park in Switzerland. Uh, which is a modern unique park enclosed by 100 meter in length, 35 meters in width, and 17 meter height steel frame trellis covered with climbing plants, reminiscent of a conservatory without glass. So here they went vertical all the way. So there's a lot of different levels. Uh, you can go on top and see plants from very different angles. Uh, they're all uh, different types and varieties of, of climber plants. Uh, seeing that in exploring the vegetation from different perspectives, it's very interesting and, and overwhelming to some degree because uh, we're used to seeing plants from a, from a specific perspective. So going and exploring places and seeing the plants from a different perspective was very interesting. Okay. So the potential and benefits of vertical vegetation is more prominent in bigger scale, but that doesn't diminish uh, their benefits on smaller scale. Uh, with that said, the potential is basically greener cities with improved quality of life, uh, added economic value with energy saving, um, an environmental approach with enriched building uh, environments with nature. And all of these uh, are all because of the benefits that we mentioned earlier, but I'm gonna highlight six of them just to go through it quickly. So enhanced microclimate where the lower urban heat island effect by shading and minimizing surfaces to sun radiation and heat consumed with evaporation from the soil and the plant tissue. And using unused spaces, where roofs and vertical unused uh, surfaces can be vertical vegetation projects. Uh, revisiting spaces in different manners can provide vertical experiences where with tools like ramps, stairs, or, or multi-levels uh, to explore and enjoy vegetation from different perspectives and angles. And then we have the farming opportunities. So any vertical vegetation opportunity is a farming opportunity, uh, outdoor or indoor, where this means bringing farm, uh, farms closer to the cities where distribution will be quick and it will end up with less pollution. Uh, social engagement, creating safer and more social spaces to ensure and be a part of. Uh, also vertical vegetation programs could use volunteers from the communities and also it will give back to the communities and that will enhance the social engagement. And then we have people in nature, uh, blurring the lines between the built environment and nature and strengthening uh, our natural relationship to nature. And thank you, Arkinet. By this, I ended the, my presentation. I know it was brief and quick, but thank you, Arkinet, for this opportunity. And I hope that this will spark ideas and, and, and thoughts uh, or even actions 
uh, in the green direction of adding vertical vegetation, at least exploring the possibilities. And, and with this, I came to the end of my presentation and I'm ready for questions. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you, Dr. Demille, for taking the time uh, to prepare us the, such an extraordinary and wonderful presentation. Um, that was flawless. <laughs> If uh, there is anyone with a question, you guys could raise your hand. Okay, we have uh, Luei with a question. Luei, you have the mic now. Yes, uh, thank you for this interesting uh, presentation and uh, the, the green facades and uh, they give a really big uh, aesthetic value to the area and psychological impact on the people. But I think there's a need uh, for a high amount of maintenance and control to avoid moisture damages for the uh, structure or the construction of the building. And also uh, it need a specific type of climate, maybe a little bit humid, not very hot. In this regard, applying these design concepts in cities in the Middle East, where uh, with a high uh, temperature in the summer, is it practical or maybe uh, only in green walls inside uh, large buildings and molds? So, uh, Yes, and this is my question. Thank you. Well, thank you, Leigh, for your question. It's a very good question, definitely. Um, it, there is, of course, some questions about the whole climate situation, but when we think about vertical vegetation, we have to think every, every part of the world has its own vegetation. So in every vegetation, there is variety of, of, of plants. So uh, most of the images were displaying a lot of different parts of, of Europe and, and different parts of the world. Uh, vegetation types of plants that works with these systems. But the problem is using uh, the wrong type of plants will cause this issue of too much water and maintenance. Or if there's an issue on the building using the, the wrong type of, 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 of green facade or living wall. So in the types that I mentioned earlier with the green facades, there's the directly attached, which usually causes damages to the building because the, the plant is attached to the actual facade of the building. And there is the, the double skin concept where it's separated from the building. So there's a gap, uh, whatever, 30 centimeters or more, that creates a gap of airflow, which is even better for improving the effect of the vertical vegetation. And also it doesn't damage the, the building at all. So it gives the chance uh, to act that way. So uh, if botanists were, were working in the situation where they can clearly choose the plants, you will see also, uh, uh, let's say, living walls with, with succulents, which do exist in California. They do exist in, in Los Angeles because it is a desert eventually. Uh, so they, the, the different variety of plants can work. Uh, a bougainvillea can work in many different ways here in, in, uh, in Saudi and the Middle East, a lot of hotter climates. Uh, there's a big uh, project in Tunisia. I, I forgot the name of the project right now, but it does have the whole building. It's a residential building. It's it's kind of a cylindrical shape and it's all covered with plants. Uh, and even in Jeddah and Riyadh, there is some examples. There's not too much examples because people are usually concerned with the whole concept of water. Uh, but if you recycle water, it, it, it's a whole different aspect. We're starts on water. That's definitely true here uh, in different parts of the world. But if, if, if that's the case, recycling water will always be a good solution and choosing the right plant. That's why I mentioned before I went through the plant uh, benefits that there's a lot of different parameters that everybody should focus on because using the right, the wrong type of, of plant or uh, the, wrong, the wrong system or the wrong maintenance system will cause you definitely to waste money and which will not be the main benefit of all of this. It will cost you too much to keep this uh, alive or maintained. I hope that answers the question. Yes, thank you. Thank you. There was another participant, uh, Abdurrahman Azadeen, um, who was interested to ask a question. Abdurrahman, uh, you could uh, raise your hand if you still want to ask a question, or anyone else who's interested as well. Okay. Mr. Abdurrahman, you have the mic now.
Hello. Yes. Hi. Thank you very much for this uh, amazing lecture. Uh, I'm uh, an student of uh, Applied Artists. Uh, I want to uh, ask you about uh, what if uh, uh, we made the uh, cladding uh, uh, by using uh, green area uh, in uh, places of uh, lectures uh, in care design. Uh, is this uh, suitable for uh, uh, the, a place uh, to, to study or uh, uh, saying uh, lectures? Presentation in lecture halls, uh, like in classrooms and stuff like that? That's what you mean? Yep, yes. Different benefits of installing it in tier, and it depends. Um, the, the, most, the more you have, uh, the more benefits you will gain. So for example, um, there was a study that was done by a professor in the University of Nebraska uh, about the whole uh, oxygen level situation where uh, consuming uh, CO, uh, carbon, uh, uh, CO2 from, uh, from the plants. Um, uh, it said that each plant, if there was a plant that's 15 centimeters high, you would need almost 100 plants for one person during a work hour, during eight hours workday uh, to consume the, C, uh, the, the, the carbon that he's emitting. Uh, so that means a lot of plants, if that was your intention of, of cleaning the air, let's say. But if there was other intentions, well, this will impact, obviously, there's the psychological impact uh, that's very strong. And then above all of that, interior will minimize the whole uh, heat impact situation, because if you have them outdoor, they will shade, the, the evaporation will minimize the, uh, the temperature. But when you have them indoor, still, when, they, when the water evaporates from the soil, or the growth medium, whatever it is, and uh, the plant tissue itself, it consumes uh, heat. But if you have hydroponics, it will be different. Depends on your climate. Again, if you're like, for example, if you're in a city that's very dry, a hydroponic system will add humidity to that air. So instead of having any water feature, just having a hydroponic system will improve the, the humidity in that space. And of, of course, on the other, other hand, there's also different types of plants, like the air plants. Uh, they consume water through humidity. So if there's a, a very humid uh, place uh, with too much water in, in the air, um, air plants will consume uh, some of that uh, humidity, which means lowering down the humidity levels in, in that space. Not sure if I answered your question, but... It, eventually, it all depends. What, what's your plan? What's the benefits that you want to gain? And, and if you choose the proper plant type, system, structure, uh, maintenance plan, then it will work well for you. If, if not, because if you want to study it very carefully, you don't need to cover a full entire room with four uh, walls, for example, to get the benefits. Uh, uh, it's the range between 60 to 80% where you can gain most of the benefits. You don't need more to go more than that, even on the exterior also. Okay. I believe that brings us to the end of our webinar today. Again, Dr. Jamil, thank you for your time. And to the attendees, thank you for your attention. And I hope everyone a wonderful rest of the night. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Jamil. Good night.